Yes, I'm Emily Osmond, and you're at Popularity. How would you describe your album, Fight or Flight? That's a really difficult question. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say how, how I would describe it without, <laughs> without just telling you to go listen to it. I mean, this album has uh, been very long in process, and, uh, you know, it's been a year since my EP come out, came out, and the, the, the style of music has changed so much. And we wanted to make a dance record and, and uh, make it a little bit more fun, and uh, this, these songs mean so much to me, and I feel like uh, we really, we really, help put them all on one record. It's one complete, um, interesting experience when it comes to music. And it's, it's, it's got some dance songs, it's got a little bit of a Euro vibe. It's also got some, like, some, like, psychedelic pop almost to it. It's got some, some rock tunes. It's kind of, it's, it's got something for everybody, but, um, it definitely is, it definitely is a step up from the last record. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of the key challenges that you faced during the creative process for the album? What was the what? What were some of the key challenges that you faced? Um, you know, not many. I mean, it was just the only, really only challenge was finding time to write and finding time to, you know, fly to New York to write or, or, or you know, finding the right type of people to write with or deciding on a producer or making those hard decisions that don't really have anything to do with the creative process. Because mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the creative process, it's, it's never really that difficult. You know, you just have to be in the right mood. What were your expectations going into the album? I didn't really, I didn't have any expectations. You know, I just, I just knew that I wanted to make, make a, a record with, you know, music that I loved and hopefully that, you know, um, lots of kids, you know, all over the world love and uh, wanted to make people dance. And, and I, I went into it wanting to work with amazing people, which, which I did. And I, I must definitely worked with some incredible musicians and um, I feel very thankful for that. Uh, when it came to the expectations, I just wanted to be different. I just wanted to make a record that kind of stood out. With everyone that you worked with on the album, who taught you the most valuable lesson and what was it? That's also a very difficult question. Um, I, I worked with, I feel like when it comes to the writing process, I worked, so I wrote, um, I think it was probably about four or five, five songs with Adam Schlesinger, uh, and we got along very, very well. And it's hard to find a writer that you just get along with so well, and, and it makes the writing process so much easier. So once we kind of found out that we, we gelled so well together, we wrote, we wrote and wrote and wrote for weeks. And uh, he uh, came out to L.A., and I went to New York, and, and we tried to make it work, and, and it was so great. And uh, I think the most important lesson that I learned was just, uh, I don't know, I, I guess, um, it wasn't so much a specific lesson. It was just being there with him while he was, you know, helping me figure out how to work with computers with tracks and Pro Tools and, and figuring out that you can make sounds with all types of different, you know, instruments. And, and I learned so much when it comes to just the actual technical writing of the songs on a computer and learning about logic and, and learning about how to use a MIDI computer and, and a MIDI keyboard and, and that kind of thing. And that was so important because I was so used to just writing songs on my guitar or on the piano and, and being in the studio and using a million different sounds really helps, and it helps uh, how they be more creative. What would you say is the biggest challenge that you face right now? Right now? Yeah. Uh, finding time to go to all of the really cool places that I want to go. Um, I'm going to Brazil at the end of the month. I'm in, in uh, New York right now. Um, you know, I, I want to be able to go to Canada and tour again, but I also want to tour in the States. And I, I have a lot of things that I want to do, but i uh, just got to find time to do them. And, and balancing acting with, with singing is, is also very difficult. Mm -hmm. Can you describe how you feel you've evolved musically and personally throughout the album creation process? Um, I feel like I haven't let people tell me what I should say or, or what, what I should sound like. I mean, when I was first figuring out what I wanted to do and, and who I wanted to talk about and, and who I wanted to work with, I was kind of letting other people guide me. And with most of these songs, you know, I went into a session already having all the lyrics written and, and sort of had an idea of, of, you know, a melody and uh, music in my head. And I, and I went in more, well, way more prepared. And it, and it helped the process, most definitely. Because sometimes when you write with a new writer, they don't really know your style and they don't know what you like. So it's easier when you kind of have half the work done already. And um, I guess I just learned, to, I, I mean, I played the bass on some songs on the record, and I, I just, I'm learning a lot more about musical instruments playing, and I play the guitar, but I want to learn more about piano, and um, I think that was the coolest thing for me. Mm -hmm. What emotion do you wish to evoke most from fans when they hear your music? I just want I just want them to give it a complete fair shot, and to, to listen to it all the way through, very loud, and to not... 
not put you know any any sort of uh, thought into it before they play it. Just play it and listen to it, and think of it as a complete clean slate when it comes to music, and and just listen to it as as an artist and, and not as anything else. Are there any songs that turned out differently than you initially thought that they would? Oh sure, yeah. I mean, when you take a song from a demo form to a final production with you know everything mastered and, and edited, it's it's a it's definitely much different than the demo. There are a few songs where I still go back and listen to the demo because I liked I liked more of the acoustic vibe of this song, or or I liked you know I like this version better or something like that. Or that, that that's always interesting. I, I especially I love when artists release demo versions of songs that you've heard for years, and, and then you go back and you listen to the original recordings of it, and it's just so different. And so so I have all these original recordings, and um, I love that. And there's a few songs. There's a song called "One Eight Hundred Clap Your Hands." It's on the record now, and it's the third song. And it's so it's so dancing. It's very fun and, and electric. And and the uh, the chorus is it's really really brought this stepped up like five times from the original recording. And I love that. But I also love that song because when we first wrote it, it was so acoustic and very jazzy. And we can still play it like that when we play acoustic shows. But I feel like that's the song that probably changed the most. Mm -hmm. Was there a song on the album that was most rewarding to see develop? Um, that, uh, that's, I feel like one of the songs, that, I mean, there's a song on the album called Truth or Dare, and that song I had written, like, maybe a year and a half ago, and I had been floating around, and we were trying to figure out a way to, to, to put it on the album and, and make it fit with the rest of the songs, and when that when that came back, when we were working on that with Nelly in the studio, my producer, Nelly Hooper, um, hearing that come back and, and hear it completely change its sound and become way way more electronic and, and much more synthesized, and it fit the rest of the record so much better, and it was such a relief, because that song was, was written so long ago, and I was afraid that it wouldn't match the rest of the record, but, uh, but it definitely did. Mm -hmm. What's your motto for life? Are there any words that you live by? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. I feel like you should really, I think the most important thing is not to worry about things you can't do anything about. That's that's a really good one. Um, I feel like I worry so much, and I, I get really stressed out over things that I just can't do anything about, so I should stop worrying about them so much. Mm -hmm. What do you feel has been the key to your success? Um, having an open mind about things and, and not caring what people say. You know, sometimes if you, if you care too much what, what the public say, says or, or uh, you know, you start changing who you are and, and start changing your music. And I knew from the start that I wanted to make a, an interesting record that had interesting things to say and, and surprise people when they listened to it. And they weren't expecting this type of sound from, from you know, 18-year-old girl from, from L.A., you know, on Disney Channel. They weren't, they weren't expecting that, and that's what I want. And if you, look at, if you look at what people say online, whether it's good or bad, it can influence the way that you write music and the way that you think you should be perceived. And I think that's the most important thing is to just not care about that. Mm -hmm. At this point in your career, what do you fear most? What do I fear most? Yeah. Uh, not being busy. I, I love being busy, and for the past seven years, I've been I've had a steady job, and that never happens. And I'm, I feel very lucky, but at the same time, I just I want to make sure that, that I'm always doing something. I get, I get bored very easily, and, and I, I want to be working all the time. Mm -hmm. And last question for you: Do you have anything that you'd like to say to the readers of Popularity? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for for keeping in touch with me and. Uh, um, I, I really appreciate it. You should go out and buy the record. Uh, um, listen to it many, many, many times.